So, uh, all right, guys. Uh, welcome back uh, to uh, this uh, initiative of IIC Rise. Uh, we are into uh, uh, integration training of um, <coughs> Red Hat version eight, and also doing the global training of RS CSA eight plus Python three, right? And um, tons of things we have done. Uh, we also initiated uh, the projects, guys. So I think you guys have done uh, doing the project. Uh, so uh, when uh, the project will complete it it it, it will complete when uh, the content will complete right because the idea is simple and the project uh, we actually integrating python with the all the concepts of linux so as soon we keep on um, adding new new features of the linux your feature of the projects will keep on increasing right so so as, as when the uh, will will soon we will complete both of this training and and the end of the training, the all the features of this <coughs> project will be completed. So three things we are doing in parallel: uh, one, um, learning Red Hat eight; <coughs> second, Python three; and third, uh, creating the projects. Right. So I think everybody is doing the same thing in parallel again. So today's topic, guys, is uh, is again pretty <coughs> pretty interesting. Uh, it is only about the Python, whatever we are doing today, right? But it is one of the topic that's come in the advanced Python. But for me, there is nothing in the advanced <coughs> if you know the things uh, from the basics and the code level, right? My topic is very, very interesting. And uh, <coughs> in, in the real and the today's world uh, of programming or the next generation programming, uh, this concept we use a lot. <coughs> the concept name that we are going to learn in the Python is called lazy, right? So lazy is one great concept uh, that we use a lot in the today's world, right? It is, it is not only the concept of Python in all the <coughs> newer languages. Um, newer languages, uh, we use this concept a lot about the lazy execution, right? If you go for, for example, Scala, if you go for, if you go for any other languages, we use a lot, right? But how um, <clears throat> we can use lazy concept or lazy evaluation concept uh, in the Python we are gonna do in a minute, right? So for this, what I'm doing, I'm directly <clears throat> jumping to my my uh, Jupyter where I will show you how to use this concept. And you know, believe me, guys, is it makes this concept makes program so fast, so genius. And that is a reason. Uh, <clears throat> that is a, that is one of the reason why um, why we use Python a lot in a big data world, and we use Python a lot in AI or deep learning world. <clears throat> so in this technology, we use a Python a lot. And one of the reason, one of the reason uh, for using the Python because they have a support and they have the understanding of doing th something lazy. Right. So, what is lazy? <coughs> we'll we'll directly jump to the <coughs> directly jump to the um, you know Jupiter, right? So, I'll go to some of the folder I have. I'll go to some of the folder. Guys, I'm holding for a second, please. Just hold for a second. Guys, okay, so just hold for a second. This might be one small. Uh, um, so, guys, guys, let's continue. Uh, let's continue with the next part. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah. So if you uh, ever uh, if you ever work in big data or AI deep learning world or maybe if we'll work right, uh, lazy is a very common thing we used. If you would like to improve the performance of your program, of your operations, of your code, that's where we use lazy. So how it improve? Right. Let me explain uh, this concept in a minute. And this is very very interesting concept. You're gonna love it. Right. If you ever work in any programming language. This concept makes the program very interesting, right? But before this, let me high level explain you <clears throat> some basics of 
uh, the python that you already know <clears throat> in a quick uh, as a quick revision so uh, you can link it to what I'm talking about, right? So technically, guys, um, <clears throat> uh, for example, for example, uh, if you would like to create a list, you guys know how to create the list. <clears throat> this is the way uh, we create a list. Okay, A is a list. And if you would like to, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, 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 go to the list and do some loop, means pick first item, then print, print second item, then print, it's, it is called iteration. And then for loop is the one, uh, who do the iteration for you so i ask for go to a inside a in uh, pick one value store in i for example and uh, start doing something like print something <clears throat> okay for loop is the one who will help you uh, to do uh, iteration <clears throat> or you can say the the loop but here it is known as iteration right but today in the today's class guys you will know you will come to know the exact meaning of exact meaning of uh, the interest and how the for loop work behind the scene also you come to know I will explain you in a minute <clears throat> but this is the concept guys you know okay but if you have a requirement to create a list right to create a list either you can create manually or we have some functions available right we have for example one function available called range okay we can use a range function uh, to create a list for example I would like to create a list uh, from 0 to 10 so I can add 10 so it will create a list from 0 to 10 Okay, so let me let me store this list in the B. Okay, so one list uh, <clears throat> it come uh, it created uh, from zero to ten, and how I know it created from zero to ten? So I'll again ask to for loop and say for go inside B, uh, pick one item, pick one item, store for example in J, uh, and uh, print it. <clears throat> so rather than I create manually range in function, it will create for you. And you can see from 0 to 10 it will print and last number is exclude here so 10 means the last number so from 0 to 9 they will create for you so this is a fast way to create the list <clears throat> but if you have a requirement to create a list and also store in some variable that you can do it like in b okay but um, uh, but if you have a requirement to create a list like from we can use this function and then list uh, whatever number you have you would like to square it Okay, so what can I do from 0 to uh, 10? Uh, I store in B. I use for loop, pick first item, store in J, and I multiply J with J. So it is squared the thing. So it will be uh, squared. But what I want, I would have to store this square in some other array. So if you remember, guys, in the last class, I have explained you one concept of list comprehension. So what can I do? <clears throat> right, what can I do? Uh, I create one list here. I ask inside the list. Ask for loop for do one thing, uh, go in B, go in B, in B, uh, pick first item of B and store in J, and whatever output of J, all right, multiply this output here. <clears throat> so guys, if you write the for loop inside the list, it is called list comprehension. Uh, this topic, guys, we already discussed it. So in one single uh, line, <clears throat> your complete new list form i am ha have with all the values okay or if you don't write to b here you can directly write the range function here so th there's no requirement to first assign into b so i can directly write a range here <coughs> range here uh, let's say 100 so one click they create one list to square of uh, of the 100 numbers and now if you have a requirement if you have a requirement to <clears throat> store this guy in one other variable let's say c you can do it so one click uh, one click <coughs> it is stored directly into into the c and if you want to want to print the c you can do it very straightforward so these are the uh, uh, <clears throat> basic concept guys i have explained you already um, in the uh, in the last class okay so in this particular example right in this particular example guys we have some issue okay and biggest issue in this example is right uh, is about the performance okay so what is the issue about the performance right now for example if you have a requirement <clears throat> right you have to uh, create a value like 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 and 4 and 5 Right. How you can create, you can use range function. 
you can give the range here <coughs> right and whatever value you are creating you would like to do some operation maybe uh, multiply with the same number plus with 10 maybe do do some operation maybe multiply 20 something like this okay so you are doing operation here and this you are just showing the c so it's not a big deal okay you are doing this operation here the big deal is guys if you have a requirement right now the data that you have is only 100 <coughs> okay and um, <coughs> data you have is is is, uh, is only 100 but you think guys uh, you might be have a data where you have billions and billions of rows number and what you want you would like to <coughs> ask range ask range to generate this number means create this number and whatever number you're creating ask for loop <coughs> just uh, go to j just go to j means pick first item multiply it and after multiply store in one list like for example let me again show you let's, let's say 10 store in c but right now guys you know what <coughs> whenever i use this function Okay, whenever I use this function, I use this function over here. Uh, <clears throat> you know what? When you use uh, this syntax here, this is called list comprehension. What we are doing, we are creating a list. And this list storing the C. And what is C? C is a variable. And where the variable store the data in the RAM. So all those data store on the RAM. And on the top of the RAM, it means, it means, <clears throat> it means, if you uh, create a number, maybe some billion number, so what they do, four will uh, process all those billion number, they multiply, they do some operations, right? This is called operations here, and all those numbers they store in the RAM. But you know, guys, if you have a RAM, RAM is a memory, right? And memory is always limited. Maybe for example, you have four GB RAM, <clears throat> maybe four GB RAM. Or maybe you have some data either you create from the range or maybe you have some data is there in some file maybe in some file you have some records uh, first one second one third one these are the records you have and this file where you have the record are known as data set so you have some data set or you this data set maybe have billions and billions of record because in today's world whatever data we have right now our, our social media side is collecting <clears throat> or they're generating are huge they are known, normally known as big data or in the big data world right there's a very common thing to have billions of rows or billions of records <clears throat> and <clears throat> if you would like to process all the billion records you know what i want i want to collect all the email ids after collect all the email ids in this <clears throat> list i'll ask for loop right just go and do this operation and you know what is this operation mail it but for mailing all those guys <clears throat> what we have to do we have to first retrieve their email id store in some variable load on the ram but email id may be billions and for storing billions of record maybe 4gb ram would not be enough so for this particular operation may take lots of time first of all or maybe after some time your memory full then you get a, get an error of ohm out of memory error <clears throat> and your program fail <clears throat> okay so my point is guys this is a very common operation in the big data world or especially in maybe in ai or dl data data deep learning world right where you have huge data <clears throat> and you have to operate in this huge data uh, using obviously like for loop or some loop or iterations so guys now we can do two iterations here <clears throat> two different iterations we can do so if you have if you talk about the for loop if you talk about the for loop right two different kind of iterations you can do or two different approach you can use okay so <clears throat> sorry if you have a for loop either first approach would be uh you can give the term call um you know complete execution or maybe eager is one word you can use here uh, what I mean by this, ask for loop, okay, just create, do, operate in all those data, pick one by one, one by one, and store in the complete RAM, <clears throat> you do in this way, okay, uh, means you are very eager, you want to load complete first, then do the further things, and load your data on the RAM, 
and do the further things. An other approach that fold you can use uh, would be lazy. Means, I'm telling my for loop, this is the program I want. So I'm telling my for loop, my for loop, that do one thing, just remember, okay, I'm just giving you a for loop, this list, this list I'm giving you, okay, and what you have to do and what you have, uh, you have supposed to do, pick first item and multiply, pick second item and multiply. But do one thing, don't do right now. Because, because this operation, if you do right now, and we have billions of numbers we have in the range. So as soon as I run this command, you operate this, you create one list, store in the C and load on the thing, everything in the end. But don't do right now. Because maybe <clears throat> I don't require this data right now. Maybe I require this data in the future. Or when I require in the future, also in that time, I don't want to use complete data maybe i am looking for first data i am looking for second data so what i want i want you just you just remember this operation right so there's two things guys either you execute or either you remember so here i'm asking this guy to just don't to execute this otherwise there will be memory or performance issue <clears throat> only remember this instruction okay and when we ask you when you call you to run this this instruction or this statement you run it and that time don't run completely i know you have 10 days or maybe billions of lists you have <clears throat> don't list completely right um, uh, obviously when you do uh, i ask just only do first item then do next then do next then do next it's called next so whenever i ask you to go next then you run it so what happened finally i would like to do double of these number but when I ask to do it, then do it. Means, you know what? You would like to do a control on the for loop. <clears throat> Guys, whenever you run the, for, run the for loop, they will run in a single go. I don't want. I, I'm saying whenever I ask uh, you to do it, then you do it. Means remember this. <clears throat> and this remember you have known is lazy. So, you know what? I know for loop, we are very fast. But I, what I want, I want you to be very lazy. Okay. And for this... Uh, for this guy, I'm showing that this demo in my Red Hat version 8. You can use Windows, right? Windows also. Uh, but for some reason, I'm showing in the Red Hat. Though I'm going to run one program. This program might hang up my system. And right now, you're connected your YouTube stream <coughs> to my Windows. So I don't want you guys hang up. But same demo you can do in, in, in your Windows also. <coughs> so, so what I'm saying, uh, I'm saying to this guy, uh, so perform for loop as a lazy don't do thing this thing remember uh, right now okay so this concept what i'm explaining you guys is known as lazy execution or you can also term use the term lazy uh, evaluation you can use this stuff <clears throat> and if you would like to do a lazy thing lazy thing in a python in some programming language they have a dedicated keyword like lazy but in the python if you would like to do a lazy thing right then in the Python, we have very advanced or very interesting concept. We use a lot. Uh, this concept is called generator. So technically, guys, today's topic is not at all about, it is about lazy, obviously, but the main name of today's topic that normally we, we learn in the Python advance, it is known as generator. So we will learn uh, generator, <coughs> right? So if you would like to uh, use a generator, it's so simple, right? If you would like to convert this statement, this list comprehension, this is known as list comprehension that I explained you in the last class, comprehension, <clears throat> right? So if you want uh, this list comprehension, won't do uh, eager. They won't do, uh, run it right now. You want, they work as a lazy. Okay, then you have to create a generator. And if you want to, have to create a generator, it's so simple to create a generator. What, would, what you do, exactly same statement, whatever you are learning or uh, running right now. Just replace this guy with parenthesis. That's all. Right, that's all. And understand this thing, guys, um, <clears throat> in, in the Linux, 
uh, we use parentheses for list we use this guy for tuple but here because inside this uh, this this parenthesis we are running some for loop something so this is not tuple actually this is this is generator that's why it's so simple you know what they done right as soon as i run this okay when i if i so talk about this guy when i run this they use complete ram they stored everything on the ram and they execute it but if i run the same statement by this uh, parenthesis is you know what right they doesn't use any ram none of the process yet done and if you ask see who are you see say i am a generator means i know write this statement but i haven't run it and i have a control on it <clears throat> and what control i have uh, if you ask me to uh, to run it so i have a control on the for loop i'll go to for loop pick first item and do the operation that's all and stop there okay so so for loop have uh, will have all the item from 0 1 2 3 4 till 10 till 9 here in this case okay so <clears throat> right now <clears throat> so i think guys my screen was paused for <clears throat> last some few seconds so <clears throat> what <clears throat> what i'll do one more guys so what i'll do right if you talk about this it create a generator generator means c say this variable say uh, we have these list come up from where from from a range and four is the one who will pick the range but uh, i will say i am i am a generator i'll tell my for loop right pause here i pause the for loop and i'm saying i'm see i know this is the location i know so when i unpause you when i resume you you have to go pick the first item do the operation which operation you do whatever you asked to do multiply give me the answer and then go to the next go to the next and again pause there yourself and when i again call you run yourself and go to the next so technically technically uh, if you would ask uh, your c or a generator right that will tell tell you to your for loop that run the first thing then we have function called next so i'm asking my c right that tell to for loop whatever you have first run it and go to next so they pick first there is zero multiply zero by zero is what zero but if i run next again one more time see here what come up one now one more time what come up four when i try run more time what come up nine so they pick here This three, okay. They run it, and they go to four. So we have a control, right? We have a control to run one by one. So if I keep on running, if I keep on running, this guy, uh, you know what? When the ten, uh, uh, when when uh, it reaches to final, it reaches to final, eighty one, or they reach to nine, or uh, because here we don't have a ten. so the number of items complete and you know what happen it give the error okay is give the error and for say we don't have a next item 10 so i have to stop myself i have to stop it because item is been finished and guys this is the way for loop one work behind the scene so how for loop come to know when you normally run for loop in this example right how for loop come to know Uh, 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 to pick first, then second, then third, because internally in the for loop, they work with address. <clears throat> okay, and uh, how the for loop come to know this is the last item? Because internally for loop, they try to pick the second item, and my system will give some error. That error is called exception. There is one topic we'll discuss in the future, and because internally for loop get the exception or the error, they come to know okay, this is the last item, and the for loop stop. Okay. so technically this is the this is the error they got behind the scene stop iteration there is nothing afterwards okay so finally you know what if you have a huge data right let me show you one more uh, great demo in my red hat version 8 one demo let me log in first
so technically a generator is a is a concept actually in the python <clears throat> that makes python lazy and lazy the concept that makes our program controllable or a performance uh, performant or uh, highly performance right and we use this concept a lot when we have a huge data <clears throat> so we can ask for loop go to my data set pick first item do something then stop i will tell you when to go when to do next when to do next okay so what i'm doing right now i'm just calling python 3 uh, in my red hat and uh, you know what i'm doing i'm going to create a one list right and where i'm multiplying something uh, for a loop uh, n i and range and here i'm using range of hues maybe how much it is 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 uh, somewhere around uh, 10 lakhs or 1 million okay if i do this operation at the same time i'll open one more terminal and in the linux we have command called free hyphen m okay this is the command we have Um, <clears throat> so this is a command we have uh, <clears throat> it will tell you the current uh, ram <clears throat> utilization right so in my system i have uh, 52 mb ram used or we have one more command in linux uh, we can use watch with half an n 0 0.1 second so what it do it keep on running this command every point one guys i think my screen is working right uh, <clears throat> so i think my screen is working now i i don't think so my screen was paused but yeah <clears throat> let me explain if, if my screen was paused all right so uh, this is a command in linux this is a command in linux um uh, what this command do <clears throat> right free have an m is a command it will show you the current used ram and the free ram is a linux command and watch is a command in linux to that keep on running this command again and again and how fast every point one uh millisecond or let's say one second so how is it uh, the the watch is running my command and they're showing me the live output of my ram and uh, right now 69 mb ram is free so you know what i'm my my, my intention is uh, when i run this code here when i run this code here okay this is not lazy when the for loop run they pick all the item multiply create a one huge big list and obviously where they store the list on the ram so what happened guys if you keep on watching here right now i have a ram 60 mb free and when i run it right <clears throat> it become uh, 59 something 6 mb ram consumed even though this is a not so much data all right but 6 mb ram they consume right let let me pick do some little bit more let's do this this number and they're taking a lot of ram a lot of ram you can see the ram goes down ram goes on sometime my system also uh, used some swap here and I, I don't know anybody who knows swap swap also been used swap is also like a your ram part and it takes a lot of time again if you see guys they keep on running is a huge operation i'm doing right now in my system and uh, system go take the ram as much they they can use but because i already have very less ram so they use uh, as much they can plus a lot of swap also so we can uh, also think uh, is it like a ram only okay they use and maybe say some also goes um, you know hang up okay this bit always goes hang up okay and you know what happened finally if you see here it's killed automatically you know it, it, internally the the system say uh, this program this is out of memory issue and when the out of memory issue uh, come up especially in the linux the program killed and finally your program fail why because you are doing eager operation and it's a very common operation that you do you do in your big data world or deep learning world it's a very common uh, mathematical operations you do in lots and lots of data okay but if you use the same concept right hello 
Hello. I think guys, my my screen is visible, right? My screen is visible. Uh, because I some students saying because live training, some saying saying is paused. I don't see here it is paused. Uh, it is working properly. Mm, I don't know. So um, if you if you do the same operation over here, over here. Uh, without uh, this list comprehension and if you use a generator okay you know what I would like to see, show you here is it is a live my RAM monitoring it is a 324 MB RAM free right now in this particular scenario right in right now in my system and as soon as I, I uh, run this within a second without consuming a single bit memory they run it but technically, you know, why they run it? Because behind the scene, right? Behind the scene, uh, they are using a lazy operation. And they say, uh, hey, hey, I am a, uh, I am a generator. I am a lazy. Uh, uh, if you, uh, wherever you need this data, this operation, I'll do for you. And I will do for you only that part, whatever you need. For example, you just need only first one, uh, ask the next it will run the first one again you ask next it will run second and guys you see the memory it don't consume it any memory here uh, if you ask the b for example it will next next one next one next one they keep on keep on doing right it's not b is a next one they are running okay and see or because they are only picking one small part they don't they're not consuming any ram yeah but if you're looking for the complete data to run all right uh, so you can use for loop here and how to use for loop here a is my generator i'll ask my a. A for loop a uh, for loop do one thing go to a go to a pick first item pick first item and do the operation okay so what four will do four go to a and ask who are a who are you a say i am a generator okay Okay, you know what? If anything that is generator, let me write here. If any variable that is generator is also a iterator, what I mean by this? Okay, uh, let me explain in this way. <clears throat> so you let me uh, can cancel this. If you ask for loop, for loop, do one thing. Go to five. Five is single value. Take this one, store in the X and print X. So you know what guys, 5 is single value, right? Single value. And if you run for loop in the single value field, and what they say, 5 is integer and it is not iterable. So for loop is a keyword. It only work if you provide a list or if you provide a multiple values. And if you don't have a multiple values, if you don't provide the multiple values, obviously it would be uh, okay. One minute, let me create a notes for you also, so you won't lose anything. One minute. Okay, I'll share guys this note too for you, with you guys. So, <clears throat> so for loop say I only work if you have a if you have a values that have multiple values like list like tuple something like this okay those are the things that i can iterate one by one one by one, one right so it means it means a for loop can work can work only on those things where for loop can go and iterate the things it means for loop only work on iterators and generator is one of the example of iterator it means if you would like to use the for loop in this A. So I can as for loop, just go to A, pick first item and do it. And I, you know, I don't know, I don't know, have you understood the power of this example or not, right? It's so powerful. You know what I'm doing, right? Let me explain in this way again. Uh, let me first create the A again. This A. And I am creating a for loop again here. You know what this guy is doing? 
right this guy is is uh, creating a multiplication or the square of these numbers 1 to some billions number okay billions number and guys whenever you do any multiplication you do multiple first then second then third and then fourth this is the way you do right but because this is generator so what they do what they do because this is generator right so internally a only create one number only behind the scene then the first number they store on the ram first number they multiply first number go to a full pick first number and print it then it generate next next number this is called the generator they generate next number okay then go to i we multiply and print it okay even though this means you are even though you are doing is such a big operation over here okay but it won't consume lots of ram data is keep on coming and keep on printing and keep on uh, you know storing the ram and they keep on removing after some time it means if i run this operation i see huge operation is is generating and see ram guys not enough ram very small ram consuming they are doing and they are doing such a big operation over here but let me control C is a big number. Let me do control C. But if you talk about without the generator, if initially guys without the generator, if you try to store this number without the generator here, let me write here without generator, it failed to generate even, right? It failed to create an array, right? This generator failed. You know what, what it sees, it sees, right? I, I don't have enough memory to create. And if, even though I have seen guys, surely your RAM goes down, your swap is started using, uh, and uh, maybe if you run have enough, it fail. Again, program will terminate. Okay. So my point is, guys, if you have a huge operation, your system, if you guys have my system also guys, go, goes hang up here. It's, it's very slow, this particular OS. <clears throat> so my point is, guys, over here is, you know what they're doing here? First, they're creating all the list and dumping on the RAM. I don't need this. I just want to do operation one by one. So why are they creating complete data on the RAM, stored on the RAM, and then we go for for loop, and for loop again, multiply and the put on the RAM. So it will be a huge operation. Unwanted memory, even though it's failed, right? Fail, program failed completely. But if you go to list compression, it was working fine. They generating also the data, plus they also doing calculation also. Very smoothly, no of my, my system hang up or other things, right? So it's, it's, I, I I don't know have you linked this part or not, but it's so much powerful thing. It's very powerful operation we have done. So this is the guys one of the uh, great example of of uh, list <coughs> list comprehension. Okay, let me tell you one more uh, very interesting example of a uh, list comprehension. Right, well, very very interesting example. Right, and here guys you gonna uh, uh, you gonna learn. Um, some more uh, concept about <clears throat> about the list comprehension for example <clears throat> let me take one example you guys know how to create how to create a, <clears throat> a function for example i have one function here let's say lw okay and inside the l function i just creating a for loop <clears throat> uh, i have a list like one two three four five okay inside this what i'm doing i'm returning i this is a function I have created, right? And now, whenever I call LW, <coughs> when I call LW, <coughs> okay, what happened? What happened? Uh, guys, guys, can you guess what happened? What would be the output? When I call LW, it run. For loop, first go to <coughs> uh, this first one, put an I and the return. Then what happened? This for loop keep, keep on running. Let's see. No. Even though you are multiple time, you always get the one. <clears throat> because you guys know the meaning of the return. <clears throat> Whenever in the function you run the return, right, this particular function stops there. It stops there. And whatever the value of i that time, it will it will uh, reach there. Okay. This, this is the uh, uh, typical way, um, uh, typical way uh, we, uh, we work. Okay. But, um, this one more uh, uh, concept over here uh, over here is let's let take one more example here let me pick this example in a different way 
And instead of we write this one, we let me write the range. Let's say till five, till ten. Let me run the function again. What happened, guys? You know what? Uh, what range will give you from zero to nine? What for loop will do? <clears throat> for loop, uh, pick the first item, let zero, and the return. And when the return come up, okay, this uh, this this function uh, stops. And what are last value they show you? Well, what are the last value y zero they show you? Even the whenever you run this function, they always always uh, give zero. Okay, so at this but obvious. So what is a great uh, um, thing I'm just going to explain you here, right? The great thing guys that I'm going to explain you here is the function that I am uh, using here. Okay, it's again very, very much interesting concept I'm going to explain you, right? Uh, so just, just try to concentrate. It's a very powerful concept of Python actually. Okay, in, in this concept guys, in this concept, right? Uh, the function that you use, right? is a, a function you can use a word called it is a function that forget the thing it don't remember the thing or you can use a function a word called this is a state less function means it means when you call this function when you call this function they go inside then for loop run and here guys we have a, a huge value from 0 to 1 to till 9 what for will do they first pick first item okay they store in the i and return will repel, reply the i and first first value is 0 because we already use the first value so what i want i want my function don't forget this the first value is already been used they remember this part and when I call the function next time one more time okay then this time this function tell to the I or the for loop that this part is already uh, been uh, been used already been used now this time take pick the next one pick the next one okay and then ask I to reply the next one Okay, and keep on doing it means right now this function is not doing this way because for function forget what the last value i we used and function forget where is my uh, last value where is my last state so they don't remember the state of the i right they forget okay and because they forget because they forget right uh, so I can tell I can even though I can say for example let uh, if I let me <clears throat> store this value into a and if I ask uh, the type of a it is a normal integer come up because i value is zero is normal integer but if you want this function uh, don't uh, work like it forget the thing I want the function remember what are the last value we used that is what I want. I want to remember those things okay so for this you have to make the function stateful and if you would like to make the function stateful then you have to create this function again a generator because generator is the one who remember the last value they use and that is a reason guys uh, when I create this example when I create this example, <clears throat> this one. So when I again let me run this because this is generator. So they know uh, we haven't used first one. Now they know in the C first one is already used. Is already used. So what we have to do, we have to use second one. And they know second one already used. What they do, they remember they will uh, go for fourth one. Okay. It means generator is the one who who remember the last value they use same thing we have to do here what we have to do we have to make our function generator and how to create a function generator let me write the same function again and whenever you want your function to be generator work like a generator then instead of written we have very interesting keyword here uh, instead of written we have to use a keyword called yield y i e l d yield 
okay yield is exactly like a return but only thing is right whenever i value you want to give back to this function okay this time yield will return the value of this function exactly the way return work but also they the uh, remember that last value i pass was or return was 1 or 2 and 3 so they rem uh, they remember this or because they remember the value in this case i can say my eligible function is uh, is a uh, generator how can i say so if you store this variable in b and if ask b who are we b c is not a normal <coughs> um <coughs> variable it is a generator or because it is a generator right i can tell my b if i run the b it say i am a generator and because it is a generator it know lw is a function and i know in lw <coughs> right the first value is is the is whatever the first value i know so what i'll do i'll tell my generator as i use the next function and whatever i first value you want to return return it then again i'm running second value then i'm writing is so interesting yeah? you can't do this thing with return right is very interesting you can do and they keep on doing till the end till the end and you guys know in the end the last number was is actually 10 uh, sorry 9 so after 9 they say i don't have uh, more values i i never till 8 i never 9 i don't have anything after 9 because it is 10 till till 10 so uh, it failed with uh, stop it as don't iterate more okay so it is a it is a great example so <clears throat> right some uh function is already there in your system they already pre uh, uh pre generators available but some function is not a generator uh you have if you want you can create a generator with uh, use of yield but finally guys <clears throat> finally if you talk about generator what it will provide you it provide lazy <clears throat> whenever you call them you can whatever last value they know wherever the last state they have right they will send that guy and they will do the operation on it plus minus multiply whatever you would like to do okay that would that part they they do for you <clears throat> right and you keep on asking they keep on doing for you okay for example right now uh, maybe you, you might think uh, it means uh, in this in this example right b is generator is generator here so okay can i have to do next again and again if you want otherwise because b is generator and in the generator you can use for loop so ask for loop for go to b pick first value maybe let's let's say j and print it because for loop is always work in a iterator for iterator is actually is one example one of the example iterator generator so it will print everything for you and for loop when no when to stop so they stop it okay so uh this is a, a one of the great example uh one more small thing i would like to tell you here is and tell you here is um uh, that is uh, what is it? it is uh for example this is a list 1 comma 2 comma 3 is a list okay uh if you would like to convert your list into a generator directly if you have if required if you want right uh for example i just like to store in m okay for this it, it is not a um, generator for this we have function called iter so it is a function you can use okay it convert your list into a generator not actually generator generator is a little bit different uh, is it a convert to iter i'm going to convert to iter you can use any of the iter options for example example i can directly use for loop or because this is iterator i think next i might i think also it work yeah it work so it is i say i i know your first is one then go to next is two i go to next is three then the thing next you can stop it okay but if you do the normal next with normal list it won't work so you want if you want to iterate something okay you have to create a iterator and um, and that iterator uh, if you get iterator you can use the next to do operation one by one if you want but but really in the realistic world we use this example a lot this one the yield 
because normally whatever you you we do we do uh, we always use create a function and in the function um, maybe we keep on generating the data okay maybe you know what example would be i asked my for loop but this is one great example i asked my for loop okay uh, for loop do one thing um let's just try to create one great example right maybe some more logics clear right for example let's say i have i have uh email address okay i have a list of email address h at the rate gmail.com second p at the rate gmail.com okay let's say two more l at the rate something.com and one more k at the rate k.com so this list i have and i think it is not a normal list you have billions and billions of of uh records you have is a big data okay it is stored there in your hard disk somewhere right now i'm just putting in my ram but i can think it's showing somewhere in your file in your hard disk and somebody ask go to the hard disk because guys normally we have a in hard disk we have a lot of space but in the ram we always has very limited space because one of the reason would be it's very very uh, is very expensive ram is always expensive hard disk is very very uh, cheap okay so um, now your duty is to pay, start picking one by one <clears throat> right and mail them so there two choice either go to the hard disk uh, store all uh, this guy on the ram first and then start mailing one by one <clears throat> right that you can do very easily uh, very easily uh, but again this is huge email address maybe some gbs of gbs ram they require so what can i do i can use here i can create uh, one function here let's say lw email okay here in this function i use for loop and say for loop go to this this particular variable this one pick first item put in the i pick first item put in the i okay and right now i'm just printing it or either the print i just returning it return i okay return i and instead of return actually we we okay let's say return it okay now whatever whenever i use lwe uh what i am expecting i am expecting first email address i got it but when i run second time what i want i want a second email address but it's not getting the first second one one reason is because this is stateless they don't remember the last one so they keep on always picking the first one okay so this is a problem we get here and for solving this issue what can i do i can use yield i e i l d yield why is spelling yield okay we are use yield they remember the other one right so let me let me run this uh, and let me store this guy in one variable called em for example email now em is a generator because generate two benefit you get in one single go the first benefit is okay uh, now whenever i call em i call em with the next em okay when i call my first email address so they give me first and the email first only given next time i'll call they give me the next so i keep on getting the email and i keep on emailing them or whatever i would like to do in this part this is the first benefit i get because they they i'm i'm using yield and because i'm using yield so they remember things second benefit i'm getting is right they are doing lazy internally internally right let's see guys this is the email i write directly here but until maybe i write here one function here that that goes um um in your hard disk and every time when i run this whenever i run this function again and again how who will run next will run every time they do hard disk Uh, and they first pick first record then they pick second record then they pick third record they keep on running it so here i can use one function here and guys if you want to use any function in this in this area uh, there's the use of lambda so when the next class we'll discuss you about the lambda you can use but to make it simple i have done this so you know what i'll when i do next here it pick the first one now they remember first one is pick 
Now if I do next again, they pick second one. It's P at Gmail dot. Let's see. P second one, right? Then third one. And the fourth one. And finally, they, they say now stop address means my my uh, my email complete your job done. So lots and lots of guys examples and applications uh, you uh, can do right with the generator. So final summary guys, if you would like to create a generator three way, either you can create a generator by this way. The it's called this is called list comprehension is called list generator right it's called list generator this way you can use second way to connect uh, to create a generator uh, in a function whenever you use the written we can use yield the second way to create a generator and third way to not actually ex exactly to create a generator but if you would like to create a iterator you can use iterator function okay the only difference in generator and iterator both are same they know next 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 and then next the only difference is in the generator or in the iterator is not two same thing right um, <clears throat> if any variable if let's say a is a iterator let's say b is a generator okay so difference is, for example, A, we have 1, 2, and 3. And B, again, we have 4, 5, and 6. So difference between iterator and generator is, right, if you, if you this iterator, so the A know uh, the location of first guy. And whenever you do next A, they pick first one, they, the position change. Again, do next A, they print this one, they, they go to next guy. This is called iterator okay but if it's a generator exactly same thing you can do but the only thing is in the iterator you have to load all the data on the ram then it will work but in the generator this data you don't have to load in the ram either they there in the hard disk <clears throat> hard disk or maybe they not yet been calculated you know like the range function we use so we keep on asking one by one and we keep on multiplying keep on getting so this data you don't require initially on the ram okay whenever required we get from somewhere or we get or keep on generating okay and because we keep on generating it is reason this is known as generator or because whenever we require it will generate it will consume it won't consume a ram and cpu so program will be super fast and it is a good example for the big data and the huge data okay and because whenever we want they will generate and there is a reason this is a part of uh, lazy so lazy execution or lazy evolu uh, evaluation is a concept name actually and the python if you would like to go for lazy this is a very very powerful topic actually uh, you have to go for generator okay but generator also do work like iterator so you can say generator is one of the sub topic of iterator you can say in this way also okay so uh, guys this is the topic for today I, uh, I highly recommend this topic it is a one advanced topic of uh, python but those guys who ever uh, plan to work in spark or big data or um, hadoop or maybe some advanced ai deep learning uh, processing uh, or maybe any data world actually or big data world um, lazy is a very powerful thing we we always want to use it right so that's all guys uh, for today i'm just um, uh, starting my um, q and a in this whatsapp uh, not in whatsapp it what is this this is youtube so if you have any q and a you can ask me so i i just started uh, <clears throat> my uh, chat chat box any query if you have you can ask me guys
राकेश परसेंटेज वुड बी वेरी हार्डर टू टेल एम एल ऑप्स बट लॉजिकल वाइज द बेस कोर कंसेप्ट एंड वेरी मेन पार्ट वी हैव डन ओके सो so this the one generator is not as such the core routine of the python but yeah whatever uh, the time limit we have in mlops we'll complete on time maybe some more days extra we if we need uh, we will definitely give us right it's not like this we'll uh, we hurry we will do hurry to complete the mlops my my main intention was to complete com properly right can you increase the class time pankaj which class time you're talking about uh this this rise classes you're talking about or the mlops what are the memory consumption by tensor flow lazy uh uh deep right it it won't take a lot of memory right uh, uh, if in the tensor flow uh if you go for lazy execution <clears throat> right but it all depend upon your data also right there lot of thing is there but comparatively eager uh, it consume very less but there is always a fixed number like 5% 10% or 90% also very from calculation to calculation and data to data so i highly recommend when you write multiple different, different different programs open your free command or your task manager and keep on monitoring so slowly slowly you will be very much comfortable um, uh, that uh, where uh, how much they are consuming but it's not always a fix is all depend upon the data can we use uh, generator for your tuple data yes you can use yes one you can use for tuple also for for um, generator even the range function that we use i think they generate tuple only but yes but technically you can use for tuple also the generator generator yes generator is is one of the example of iterator but they do something extra also like lazy thing for smart data server version one prefer iterator generator uh, for a small uh, small data set it is also depend upon multiple uh, requirements agar um, uh, uh, for example um, uh, if you have a small data set and uh, uh, you want to do operation on the data set multiple times so don't go for generator because every time they calculate they load so put complete data on the ram then process it okay but if you have a huge data set you don't have any other chances because you don't have a ram so then ask generator they will keep on generating or getting the data and do it okay so uh, but you will understand guys what i'm talk talking about sagar but i'll try to give you some difference here so it is not like this generator is good or iterator is good both have a different use cases but depend on the scenario but in the big data set you have generator is the very common use case uh, we use uh, uh if it uh, yeah is great thing neha you asked me uh, if it is so fast so why it is uh, non lazy um, because uh, actually I, i i don't say it is fast according to me uh, according to me uh, it is not fast but it improve the performance they two different thing right uh, i'd a simple uh, if you have a huge data okay and you first you load on the ram and then process but you don't have so much ram so my system is keep on fighting keep on fighting uh, you know to get the ram first so the overall performance will be will be slower okay uh, but in the generator they keep on generating uh, run on uh, run on the ram and then they process then they remove from the ram then new data come on the ram they they process and then they run it so finally it improved the performance of the program but it 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 become little slower for example uh, for example you have one mb data and you want to do some calculation right the faster program you know what would be load the one mb data completely on the ram then do the operations okay it will faster but if you would use the generator okay they won't load the complete data on the ram they every time they go to hard disk load one part then do that again go to hard disk then load on the ram uh, then do the things so generator is a is a very slow um, compared to the normal other eager or other other process uh, so i'm not saying this fast uh, because they are lazy means whenever you ask they will do the things so they have to they take extra time but in the big data world 
data is so big if we don't have any other solution uh, uh, so we have to go for lazy operation so just i'm trying to explain you uh, you know so for me uh, generator is not fast but i say yeah it is good for performance especially the big data world you can use in daily uh, no uh, akash uh, it you can't use generator in linux operations i say uh, it is a concept of a programming world but if you have any command or program in the linux maybe they might be using lazy so it depend upon the developer of the programs so it is not concept that you can use in uh, your linux operation world but yeah if you have any operations for data respective right there you can use it but there is no ss command in the linux operation so it depend upon the job role so if you have any data related job role where you can use generator or the lazy and we use a lot actually right for example in the spark if you heard about we tool uh, use a lot in uh, linux some data cluster uh, there we use lazy a lot what is masquerading uh, nilesh masquerading has lots of different meaning uh, what context you are talking about normally we use masquerading a lot in the networking concept so if you want to hide your ip and you want to give the other ip this is the one of the concept of masquerading we can use dns also so which context you are talking about if you can ask me so when we will next docker class i guess when we have done the docker class already so i don't know which class you are talking about in the last class we have done and we we have explored we have given you a projects right and i think this is the last week to complete your project and after completing the project you will get the project def uh, certificate definitely right so go through my last video of the docker i explain everything uh, which kind of project uh, you have to do A mlf project guys we will discuss the mlf class uh, it is not right time to discuss uh, yet because after devops will start i will discuss about the project we'll discuss what we going to do guys this the this part uh, the the um the so um what i say at this class notes i will share in your drive google drive after the class uh what is eager approach um, if neha if you are the part of machine learning ml of training they are explain you I already explained what is eager approach but uh eager approach is uh, uh, as soon as the code run all right it it uh, run the code right you know first example i show you today list comprehension so as soon as i run my for loop run the code they do the operation like multiply so they don't wait so think that is not lazy is eager and normally by default we always work in eager uh but we were talking about recorded class photo yes uh, yeah so i think uh, yes when you're talking about the ml of class respect to two classes we have given uh maybe next class we will go tomorrow because the classes were longer four hours so we normally try to give two days for one class so next class we will provide tomorrow right in ml of ml of class so uh, <clears throat> so that's all guys i'll try to touch as much as i can uh so that's all uh, see you guys tomorrow and we will learn some more new advanced thing in the uh, python so my plan guys to be this week to cover as much as in the python world and then whatever remaining topic we have left in the linux we will pick those topic okay so soon guys we will complete this complete uh, journey of rss and python soon right so that's all guys uh, great and see you tomorrow bye see you